Good morning, friends. I'm Clover, and this is Genuinely Approachable Sudoku. And today we are solving a Cubist phase by Philip Newman. This is a German Whisper Sudoku. That means that we have normal Sudoku rules, replacing the digits one through nine once each in each row, each column, and each outline three by three region. And then we also have some green lines in the grid. And the green lines are German Whispers lines, and along each green line, any two digits that are connected by the line have to have a difference between them of at least five. So for example, this six can only ever be next to ones because that is the only digit in a Sudoku, one through nine, that has a difference of five or more away from six. So the trick with German Whispers, and I've mentioned this in other videos on this channel before, is that digits along a German Whispers line always have to alternate between high and low. And five can never be on the line, because if five was on the line, it would have to be surrounded by digits that were five away from it. But we can't use a zero in Sudoku, we can't use a ten in Sudoku, so there would be nothing we could put next to a five. So five never goes on the line. And all of the low digits are only ever five or more away from high digits, and high digits are only ever five or more away from low digits. So as a result, the digits will always alternate between high, low, high, low, high, low. So what I'm going to do to kind of clarify this puzzle is I'm going to highlight every other digit in blue. And those are going to be my low digits. And the reason I know those are the low digits is because I've already been given some low digits on the line up in the top left corner. So these are all gonna be low. So the first thing I notice from doing that is that this is low, but it's not one, two, or three, so it must be four. And because it's a four, it can only ever go next to a nine because that's the only digit that is five or more away from a four. Now three can only be next to an eight or a nine, and because we already have a nine, we're gonna mark that with an eight. Seven is only ever gonna be next to one or two. Those are the only digits that are far enough away from seven. So we're gonna have a two there because there's already a one in the row next to the six. The rest of these are gonna be a little trickier. So here we need a one and a three to finish off our complement of low digits in column two. There's a one already in row seven, so that'll go like that, three and one. So we know that these can only be 8 or 9, and there's already an 8 in this column, so that's going to be a 9. This could still be either an 8 or a 9. This is going to be 2 or 3, because it sees a 1 and a 4. This is going to be 8 or 9, because it sees a 6 and a 7. Interestingly, that gives us a little 8-9 pair here. If we look at column 5, the only remaining low digits are 2, 3, and 4. This can't be a 4, though, because it would have to be surrounded by two 9s, which is impossible. And this also can't be a 4, because that would have to be surrounded by two 9s, which is also impossible. So that is a 2-3 pair. This 3 can only be next to 8 or 9, and there's a 9 in the row, so that's going to be my 8. And that means that this guy has to be either 1 or 3 to go next to the 2. Now, we need two more high digits to go on the either side of this cell, row 1, column 5. And they can't be 8, and they can't be 6, because 6 can only ever go next to a 1. So this must be 7 and 9. So one of them is going to be 7, which means that in between them we can't put a 3, because whichever side the 7 was on, that would break. 7 and 3 are only 4 apart. So that's going to be a 2, meaning that this is either 1, 3, or 4. There's a 1 in the column, so it's 3 or 4. That means this cell can't be next to 7 either, so that must be my 9. That's my 7. It can't go next to a 3, so that is a 1. And now this has to be 8 or 9 in order to be far enough away from whatever this cell is. That's now 1 or 2. That's 1 or 3 just by Sudoku. Um, this one is going to be 1, 2, or 4 by Sudoku. And that's all of our low digits penciled in. Let's continue working on some of our high digits. Okay. So, we need a... 7, 8, or 9 here, and the C is 7 and 9, so that's going to have to be an 8. This is also going to have to be something bigger than 6, so it's going to be either 7 or 9. There's a 7 in the column, so that's going to be a 9, meaning that can still be either 1, 2, or 4. Uh, the 2 just made this a 3. And so now if we look at this region, we need 3, 4, 5, and 6, but we have a 3 and 5 in this column. So these are going to be 3 and 5, and these are going to be 6 and 4 in that order. Now these are from 1, 2, and 7. That's not a 2. We have a 7 here that rules 7 out of these cells, so that's going to be a 7, and these will be 5 and 6. Meaning that these three digits are 3, 4, and 8. That's now a 9 because of the 8 in the row, and that makes this an 8, which makes this a 9. 
And these are going to be 5 and 6. The 8s in columns 7 and 8 rule 8 out of these cells, so that's now going to be an 8. This has to be a 6 because it's high and it sees 7, 8, and 9. So that's a 6 with two 1s on either side, which resolves all of this. Now there's a 5 here, so there's a 5 in one of these cells. That makes this a 6 and makes this a 5. Uh, between a 1 and a 2, we need either a 7 or a 9. It sees a 7, so that's going to be a 9. And so here we have 3, 4, and 6. We can rule a 3 out of that cell because there is a 3 in the row. In this column, we need to finish off with a 7 and a 9. By Sudoku, we know which way those go. And here, we still need 2, 3, 7, and 8. There's already a 7 and 8 in column 4, so these are 2 and 3. And these guys are 7 and 8 in an unknown order right now. We need 2 and 4 here to finish off this column. And 5 and 6 here to finish off this column. Now, in this row, we need 4, 5, and 7. And that's not going to be a 7. Actually, I think we can make this a little bit more straightforward, I believe. Um, yeah, we have 6s here and here. This can't be a 6, so that's going to be my 6. I've actually missed a high digit here. That has to be an 8 now. That makes things a little bit easier. So these are going to be 3 and 4. That's not a 4, so this is a 5, 7 pair. We have a 3, 4 pair going vertically here, so we have 2 and 5. That makes this a 2. And here we need 2, 5, and 7. This has to be the 2 because 2 can't go in column 2 there. These are going to be 4, 5, and 6. That's not a 2. I have a 6 in this column, so that's 5 and 6. That's either 1 or 4, so that's going to be my 7, and that resolves this region. Okay, these are 1, 3, 4, and 9. This can't be 1, 3, or 9. It's a naked 4. It's 1 and 9. That's 4 and 1, 2 and 4, 5 and 2, 6, and that's going to be a 5 to finish the column. That makes this a 6 and a 5, and now we can finish off with a 7 and an 8. And that's how you solve Philip Newman's cubist phase. Hope you guys liked that one. The link to check it out yourself is in the description of this video. And I'll see you again in a few days.